Hey guys, welcome back to the Ant Bay. Hope you guys had an amazing week. So, it's been a while since I've given you guys full detail update on our Campanados for Dennis. A lot has happened since the last update. The colony is now numbering in the thousands, probably somewhere between 2 to 3, and if I'm pushing it, maybe 3.5. Uh, my claims up to 4,000 is probably false. <laughs> it's really crazy to think about just in 10 months this colony has become this huge uh, considering how big these species are. Normally the size of these ants grow really slow and it takes uh, you know at least 2-3 to three months for them to develop but no, these girls will just pump out new workers like I don't know, within a month. Wait, before we get started, this colony still doesn't have a name. So what are you waiting for? Leave a comment below and I'll pick the name I like the most. Do it. Do it now. Yeah. I'm on the shorts, nigga. Yeah. Subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened within the last 10 months? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Uh, well, sit down, little ant keeper, because good old ant babe will tell you about the Floridanus, aka the anus. <laughs> oh my god. Oh boy, I am so getting censored over this one. <laughs> so I got these girls about 10 months ago in a test tube, and she roughly had about 2-3 to three workers and a few broods here or there. But seriously, from the get-go, they were super active. In about a month, they were too big to be kept in a test tube. So I moved them into the Tar Heel Mini Hearth. Just after two months of giving them additional Mini Hearth, they grew so much that they needed to move into a bigger nest. And I could not just keep on giving them new Mini Hearths. That's when I got them the Tar Heel Fortress. In my opinion, they did the best in this nest. Believe it or not, it only took them two more months to completely fill out the fortress. The colony was so massive that most of the workers were living outside in the outworld, and it just became such a hassle to clean up after them. Now, here we are. Full 10 months later, the Floridanus are in the Tar Heel Nucleus. This is truly a massive nest weighing about 15 pounds. It is double sided and comes with its own platform, which is pretty awesome. Now truth be told, I probably moved these girls in a little bit too early. I probably should have gave them another mini hearth just so they can grow in numbers. And that's why you can see here that one of the chambers is dedicated for pooping. It's kind of annoying, but I'm sure they will, you know, clean it up once they grow numbers, which probably will happen in like another month or so. The queen is doing amazing. Just look at that fat ass. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> for it, anus. <laughs> Ever since she moved into the new nest, she's been laying eggs non-stop. It's like whenever I take a look into the nest, there's a new batch of eggs. There are chambers filled with freshly laid eggs and newly hatched larvas. With all that being said, it's sad that I never got to film her laying an egg or two. As for the rest of the colony, they are doing amazing. They're always super active, seems like they love exploring their outworld. They're always crawling over the platform, and I feel like the platform needs its own name too. I don't know, something cool after like a mine temple? <laughs> well, Good luck me trying to pronounce it, I guess. <laughs> so let's get into the cool stuff. These girls are always hungry. Every time I give them sugar water, they swarm by the hundreds. It's actually so cool. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. And they'll drink even if their gases are filled to the brim. I don't know where it goes, but you know, they're always drinking more. <laughs> Protein wise, I feed them two times a week. Normally on Wednesdays, I will give them a mealworm or two depending on how much brood I see. And on Sundays, I either give them two cockroaches or a superworm or switch around and give them two, you know, superworms and like one cockroach. At one point, I thought I was giving them a little bit too much protein, but I haven't seen any mass die off or anything like that, so I'm sure they're not getting protein poison and, you know, these girls do develop really quick, so I'm not too worried about them eating too much. Ooh. On today's menu, we have two dupe roaches and one super worm. 
It doesn't take long for the colony to notice that there is food outside. I'd like to give them combinations of protein or mix it around a bit, so that way they're always having something different. You know, I'm sure you wouldn't like eating the same thing over and over again. From everything that I've given them so far, I would say their favorite thing to eat is the Dubian roaches. It's really cool watching them feed. As more the prey struggle, more majors will come to tear them apart. And they make a quick work of it too. So, this was something cool to see. You see this major here? She's carrying around some nectar in her mouth and trying to give it off to the others. Anyone know why she's doing that? I've never seen this before. Maybe she wants to store up protein so she's giving more uh, nectar to the others? I'm not sure. Yeah, let me know what's happening here. Campanatus floridanus is really awesome species to keep. These girls are always active, always looking to eat. You know, there's never a moment that you know you look at them and you're like, eh, they're quite boring. And best of all, they're super hardy. Even though they're from warm temperate climate, they can tolerate and thrive in temperatures around 60 degrees. If you're thinking about starting an ant colony, I would definitely recommend these girls. They have super fast growth, amazing looking majors, and an appetite that's hard to match. I would say it's a great species for a beginner. So if you guys liked the video, please make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Let me know what else you would like to see in the future. And always, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Bye!